Hi everyone, so I'm back. This is actually going to be a project share for um, this recipe stamp that is part of the new release from May um, from Diana Markham and Adorn It. Uh, this is the recipe stamp that you could purchase individually if you wanted to um, have this. Uh, I think it was an option when you went to um, pick up some of the other items. Um, but this was, I don't believe this was part of the subscription. Um, I think this was a, a individual stamp that you could purchase. So um, this is a really fun stamp to color in. I'll tell you that because what I have done is used it for the front of my recipe book that I've built. So yes, I have built my cover and assembled um, the cover with the rings together. You can see it here. Um, I wanted to share um, the process for that. So if you stick around, this video is a long one, sorry about that, but it has the process for how I covered and um, figured out the measurements for my book. Um, but also I want to show you, because this is not part of the process, um, the colored image for the recipe stamp. So here we are. This is what I went with. Um, so you can see there is actually a acrylic sheet over the top of this because um, this is just a um, Copic colored um, image right here and then I fussy cut it well I used my scan and cut to cut this out um, and I've cut it four times so there's three layers of white cardstock underneath the colored image that's all glued together and then I um, also used some of my shaping tools to help clean it up a little bit because it um, stacking it up and gluing it all together <laughs> was um, kind of a fun challenge but yeah I, I don't know if I'm gonna add much to the front I, I've, I've actually been toying with it to put some die cuts on from the doodlebug um, design um, paper but I decided to hold off for now and see if I um, really feel like putting on there so um, I just wanted to show you the colored up image um, and I pulled the colors from the paper um, from the this um, design paper here because my overall book is going to have lots of different colors and you can see from the the rings here that and sorry for the glare um, the rings here that it's going to be very colorful um, some pages uh, will be geared towards different um, times of the year, so I wanted to be able to fit those in as well. So that's the reason why I've got all these colors in here, and it just makes me happy. <laughs> so um, the other thing that I did do, what what you're seeing is the book. I put two um, empty DVD cases in here so that I could prop it open, and you can see um, that the book itself lays flat and it's gonna be able to hold about let's see I'm gonna measure it since I have those cases in there uh, an inch maybe an inch and one two three eighths maybe a little bit more than that um, depending on um, some things so an inch and three eighths right now that's two DVD cases stacked on top of each other um, just so that I could show you how it looks when the rings are kind of um, fitted properly, right? So as I add pages in here, if they're dimensional, it'll make the book um, start to expand. And I'm gonna have some pockets too. Um, and part of the reason I explained for the pockets, and you'll see this in the video, is I have these recipe cards from Doodlebug, and I also have these from Paper Tray Ink. These are I purchased a long time back. Um, there's a hundred recipe cards in here. Um, these are just a different shape and I, I thought I would be able to um, use this um, for some notes. So, you know, sh she has the recipes on her stamps, but if you have like certain diet um, restrictions or want to just make it a slightly, maybe, maybe you don't want as much sugar or something like that, just to adjust it a little bit for your diet. Um, you can try those out and then make notes and insert them with the recipes. So I thought it would be a good idea to at least have that um, in case. And let me just quickly show you the co Copic colors that I used to color this image. There's a lot. Um, don't be afraid because it really is a lot of different colors used in here. So um, I'm just going to show you quickly the colors 
um, by handfuls. So this is the first set. And like I said, I pulled the different colors from the rings and from the paper line um, here um, so that I could um, have kind of a cohesive look for the book. So I've got all kinds of colors in here. Um, one of the things you probably don't see is green, but there is green going to be green in the book. So, so those are the different Copic colors that I used. Um, and that's because they're shading obviously in here, but, um, that's, um, that's the outside. So as I said, there's a process video after this. The other thing that I've included is I had some extra acrylic after, cause my acrylic sheets were 12 by 12. So with the extra sheets, I, I had, um, actually this piece I cut down and I, I, um, cut it in half. I, you can barely see it and made bookmarks. So I have two bookmarks here and I punch them with the same punch that I punched the, um, the cardboard or the cardstock and, um, the front acrylic. And they're slightly smaller than the actual cover. So they're inside the cover. They don't get, they don't stick up above it. Um, and these are meant to be bookmarks and you can see through them. So those will be in the front of the book. And then you can also, that's, this is the beauty of this type of ring bound book. You can pull it out by just, you know, snapping it. And I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to have to put it back in, but they'll be at the front of my book. Um, and then I can put them anywhere I want when I'm inserting new pages. So as I build the book, um, you're going to see it start to grow in size and I may be adding things here and there to the cover or to other pages. And I will share those as projects with you all. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the uh, process video right after this. Um, and it's a long one. So um, if you're interested, please continue watching. Thanks for watching and thanks for stopping by. Talk to you later. Bye for now. Hey everyone, I am back. So I decided I was going to film some of the... Um, assembly for my cover um and the first thing I started with is deciding what size I wanted my book to be okay and there's a couple of things I took into account um when I was doing this so let me just kind of explain my thought thought process here and you can decide what you want to do obviously it's your own project and um you can determine how you want to do this and based on what you have, right? So I decided I wanted my cover to be seven inches wide. So it's seven inches wide by eight inches tall. And I don't know if you can see my handwriting, but so it's seven inches wide by eight inches tall. Why? Because I thought that would be a good measurement for um, some, you know, the majority of the stamps that are coming out like this stamp right here if you look at it and I put it on the cover then it's going to um, have a nice um, kind of look to it it doesn't it's not too small on the page and it's not too big on the page okay so that's one of my one of the reasons why I did that and so here's another one of the, the stamps you can see I can I can kind of fit stuff around it um, and it's not you know kind of dwarfed by some of the things that are going to be on on some of the pages so that's the stamps but I also have some other things that you know I took into consideration so these are the this is the recipe card from doodlebug it comes in a package of 36 and I wanted to be able to fit them this way into my book so I believe this is let me measure it for you six inches. So this is six inches wide, right? So I wanted to be able to fit it into a pocket if I wanted to put it into a pocket, um, uh, width wise. Okay. So this leaves me some room for the binding. And because my binding is going to be using these types of rings here, I took my punch and I'll show you the punch. Cause I think some people have been asking what, what's this punch that you're talking about? This is the punch that it makes, okay? So you can see these little, they look like nail heads that have been punched out, right? And if you put the ring in, it just, it fits in there, see? Like that. So that means I can pull my pages out and reorder them any way I like. 
So you, you basically will figure out how many rings you're going to want based on the height of your book. Okay? So this is what that punch looks like. And I have one that will do maybe six pages at a time if it's like text weight paper. But of course I have to be able to punch this particular um, thickness of my um, page. So I couldn't use the chipboard that I had originally brought out. So I switched over to the tag board. Uh, tag tag cardstock. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me pull it out. Okay. So this is tag cardstock from Paper Tray Inc. I already had this on hand, okay? Don't go out and buy everything. Um, you don't need to do that. Oh, this is shimmer cardstock. Oh boy, I pulled the wrong one. Do I have it out? One second. Okay, so this is the white tag stock from Paper Tray Inc. It is 160 pounds. You see that? 160 pound paper. Um, so it is heavier than your normal card stock which is, well, I use 100, car, 100 pound for my cards, for my bases. This is 160 pounds. Okay, plus I am, and it's $9 a pack for 15 sheets. My book is, because I only need it for the cover, I only need two pages of this, two sheets of it. So I cut it down to seven by eight, and then I, I um, made it sticky. So I use a Xyron to do this and because I have it and I've actually made, these are for the inside of the cover and this is my front cover. Okay. So I uh, ran this through the Xyron and it makes your whole piece of paper like a sticker. Okay. So that's what I've done here. This is the back cover. So this will be the outside and I've decided what, what, you know, what I want on the outside and what I want on the inside. And I've also marked it inside. Okay, don't um, don't get them mixed up. Um, they're the front and the back are the same size, but once you put your paper together, you want to make sure that it's going in the right direction. So if you have a pattern that is upright, like this has to be, you don't want it upside down or side to side. So because my book is seven by eight, it's one inch less on the width. Okay, so I wanted my paper to be able to run in the correct direction. Now my back cover is going to be a different pattern and I've again already run my run it through my Xyron so I wanted to show that to you um, let me just cut these apart because it'll be easier for me to work with and you don't you don't have to have a Xyron to do this but the reason I ran it through mine was because you can use this type of tape this is double-sided sticky tape the reason I ran it through my Xyron is when you do that, it makes the book more sturdy. So it's even more uh, sturdy, sturdily held together, together. Is that correct? I don't know. Um, but um, so now we've got the tag um, cardstock, which here is a piece right here. If you want, it's, it's very sturdy. Um, so this is what I used on the inside. And then you're actually adhering two other sheets of paper, one on the outside and one on the inside, to make it even more of a weight, right? And then I'm going to punch it. So I, I haven't punched it yet because I'm going to run both at the same time. I'm going to try and punch both at the same time so that they'll be lined up correctly. I hope that works out. So this um, needs to be covered. So I made uh, my choice of having this pattern be the outside and, or I'm sorry, this pattern be the inside of the book and this pattern be the outside. And then I have this one for the inside of the book and I have another one for the outside. The other, the outside doesn't need to be sticky because I made the cover piece actually sticky. So that's why I didn't have to do that. So I'm gonna show you, hopefully I do not screw this up because I'll get upset with myself. Um, so what I've done is taken this and cut this down to one, uh, is it one eighth of an inch or two eighths? One quarter of an inch? Yeah. A quarter of an inch shall, uh, smaller than the actual, um, 
a quarter and a half. No, sorry, an eighth of an inch smaller all on all sides than the base so that it doesn't go all the way to the corner and it will hide all of these um, things here. That's why I wrote on it, it wouldn't matter. I knew it wouldn't matter. And um, you could decide whether you wanna ink the edges of your paper, but I'm not going to. Okay, I even wrote on this side, this is the opposite side that's sticky. I wrote sticky, so I knew which way to run it in my Xyron, because I knew this is the side that I wanted to show. Okay, so is that what I want? Yes, that's what I want. So now I'm going to just place this in the correct position. And like I said, I have a one eighth of an inch um, offset all the way around. So I'm gonna try and center this the best way possible. I should have probably left some of that adhesive on there, but it's okay. We're not going to stress too much about it, right? This is my book. It's staying with me, so I'm not gonna to worry too much. Okay, this is good enough. So now we have the back cover of my book, but it isn't punched yet. And my punch is gonna be on the side of my book, not along the top, because you can do it along the top, right? Nobody said that it had to be around the side. So I, that is basically the back and the front of my recipe book. I'm sorry, the back cover of my recipe book. Now, the front cover is is basically me doing the same thing. And I didn't show you me uh, doing the outside part, so I'll show you that too. Hopefully this um, video isn't too long. So this is the front cover, the, the guts, the innards of that piece. And you can see I've labeled it. This is the top, this is the bottom, this is the right, this is right and this is left. And that's if you were, this would be the inside, right? And so on the back I wrote sticky, which would face out, this is gonna face out. So all I'm gonna do is actually um, get my piece of paper that I want. Okay, you can hear all the rings jingling. This is the piece of paper I chose to use. Why? Because I'm going to put this image on the front of my cover. And I don't want that something that's too busy to be on the front. Okay? So I'm going to use this stamp on the front cover of my book. And um, so that means I'm going to turn this over. You're never going to see this polka dot because this is going to be facing the sticky side. And then I'm going to basically line this up. See, I'm going to use my um, my mat, my glass mat, to line up the piece of paper. And I'm going to lay the paper down a quarter, no, a half an inch from the top and a half an inch from the side. So that would make it like right here. And I'm not going to, I don't need to be exact, um, but I do want to, you know, kind of be straight because the pattern should be straight. So... Where is my ruler? I thought I put it back. Nope, right here. So, um, I'm gonna use my grid here to kind of do this. Um, it's kind of along those lines of the polka dot in a little bit, okay? So this is where the cover would kind of end. And I can write on this because you're not gonna see this part. It's gonna be on the inside. So when I lay this paper down, the top of this piece of paper is going to be from that dot across to where that line I drew, okay? So I'm just gonna sort of peel back some of this wax paper, and instead of pulling it all off this time so I can place it correctly, I'm gonna want, like I said, to line up to that dot and that line, and I should be good to go. So I have a half an inch, of paper overlapping at the top and a half an inch down the side. Okay? So now I can sort of pull back that wax paper as I stick down. 
and hopefully I don't have any bubbles. And this is just a 12 by 12 piece of paper. I did not cut it down because why well, take the extra step to cut it? Cause I'm going to cut it right now. Um, and I will be right back. Give me a second. Okay. So I'm back. I cut this piece of paper. You can see it. So really this overall, the yellow polka dotted paper, which is really this on the front, this is, um, eight inches wide by nine inches tall, this piece of paper, because I have to have that. I wanted that half inch gutter all the way around. And so what you do to make the nice little corners is you get your scissors and I'm not going to even mark this. You could do it with a ruler if you want. And you don't want to cut all the way to the corner, but I'm going to cut a diagonal line to cut that tip off. Okay. So you just want to cut a diagonal line. Don't go all the way to the corner because you want your paper to somewhat overlap that. So you can see I left a little bit beyond the corner. So I'm just going to do that all the way around. And this might be, um, you guys, if you've done mini albums before, you've probably already done this. I'm only doing this for those folks who've never done this before um, and might ask about, how did you do that? But this is how I do my covers. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, so I've got all the four corners cut off. I'm going to go around and I'm just going to start creasing up my paper, folding it up around the sides. Okay, and I'm going to use my bone folder to give me a nice crease against that edge. I'm just using the edge of the tag cardstock, the white cardstock, to kind of figure out where that fold should be as a guide. See, I'm not being all measure, measure everything. I leave some of it to chance and hopefully I don't screw it up. <laughs> so I'm just going to do that. I'm just using my fingers to kind of curl it all up and around. Last fold. So you don't see any of the white tag stock at all once we're done, hopefully. Because your pages or your papers, your decorative paper is going to cover that. Okay, so then what I did was, you know, this side isn't sticky, this white side, right? So then what I did was folded everything back out and then I used this, I think this is quarter inch or half inch, maybe it's half inch, it's a half inch, um, tape to, um, stick the flaps down and it's okay if your tape is peeking above that strip because you're going to cover this piece anyway with another piece of paper. Okay. So it's okay if the um, tape is hanging over the edge, it's not going to be a problem. It's actually going to help you if you do that. I just had something fall off my desk. Oh, it's one of my cover sheets. Okay, so this is just double-sided sticky tape. I want this book to last, so I'm going to take measures to make sure it's nice and sturdy. It doesn't fall apart, and it's got to be able to hold up to being in the kitchen with me while I'm making whatever recipe it is, because this is not just for something to look at on a bookshelf. Although that's where a lot of my book cookbooks end up for the most part. You guys, I don't, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but we're about to do a kitchen renovation too. And <laughs> if anybody has ever done one, um, yeah, we're, we're doing a full renovation too. Um, so that's going to be fun. Not really. The reason I mentioned this is because we got our, um, half, not half, more than half of our delivery of our appliances today. And so my living room looks like boxes right now with a fridge in it. It's got a huge fridge in it. 
Okay, so, okay, let me make sure I did this correctly. Or I'm going to do the two top, the top and the bottom first. See, this is why I labeled it top, bottom, because that's how I did it on the back piece, just so that the uh, folds are consistent. So I fold the top edge first, and then I fold the bottom after I take off this piece of paper that's, you know, to reveal the tape. And then I do the sides so that the top and the bottom are underneath the two sides. Okay. That's just for consistency. You could do it however you want. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. Okay. And I'm just using my bone folder to give it a good sticky base. You're not going to see any marks or anything like that. As long as your paper is nice and thick, nice quality paper and mine is I don't know what the weight of doodlebug designer paper is but it's probably like 60 60 or 80 pound maybe okay so that's the front cover right okay so this is top and bottom not that it matters because I'm getting ready to cover that anyway okay so I chose this as my outside this is gonna face outside okay and this is going to be inside. And so all I need to do then is to use this, which is actually the same pattern as my back cover on the outside. I'm looking for it. See, I didn't want them to be all the same. It was like, why make it match? It's my book. I can make it whatever I want. And I almost made a mess up. Okay. Make sure your pattern is going the right direction. So you know, this is the this is the right way because you could see the pattern of the paper from top to bottom. Everything's upright. So when I flip it over, everything is upright. Make sure that you do that, okay? This one doesn't matter so much because if I did it this way, if I did it this way, it's really not going to matter, okay? But if you have a pattern that has to be, you know, vertical in a certain direction, make sure you do it correctly, okay? So at this point, I marked it doesn't matter for the outside but for the inside it does in terms of you know which way it's facing so all I'm gonna do is take this again off we'll do it again make sure that I center it correctly okay so again I cut this piece of paper so that there's a 1 8 I think it's a 1 8 inch all the way around the um, base of my book and so now you can see this is why I'm doing this you can kind of see there's a little gap between these two pieces okay I'm gonna cover most of that gap by putting this piece piece of paper down and you don't want anything between I've got stuff on my book um, that gap isn't so noticeable like this actually overlaps on this side so you're not gonna even see anything there these meet Okay, and so do these pretty much. So the pattern is just really good here. Um, I'm not going to worry about this because I'm just not going to. And again, I'm not going to ink my edges because I don't want to. I'm okay. So I just removed some of the sticky. I got some of the wax still so that I don't... Because this Siron stuff is really, really sticky. Once you got it down, you're not going to be able to get it up again. So just take your time, do a corner at a time, don't go until you're ready, you know, and make sure it's in the, the correct, it's lined up correctly. I hope that's right. I'm not going to worry. All right. So I'm just removing the wax paper as I'm pressing down and there we have it. Now, if you have um, some stickiness around the edges, which I do, I can feel it. There's this little wonderful thing. This is a rubber cement eraser. You can run it all along the edge of your paper and it will remove any gumminess that is along the edges from that um, glue, the glue or adhesive that you use. See, I didn't use glue, so. But this works wonders. Um, for that so I'm just gonna do that so I don't feel any more of that 
and it doesn't it doesn't stick to any of my pages because that could happen too and then it could rip okay so that's the front cover this is the inside of the front cover this is the back cover inside and then this is the outside okay so basically fitted together they're going to be like this right and let me show you the punch so this is the punch that I have had for years. This is called an arc punch. It's by Staples. I don't even know if Staples. I know I've seen this on um, Amazon. Okay. So arc is the brand by Staples and it looks like an M. Um, that's the logo that they have. So this does different sizes. If you look here, see this, I can pull it out and, and there's a guide on it. See that? It goes all the way in, not all the way, but this is the smallest you can get. Now I work this out where I'm going to use six rings. Okay. So I know that means that one, two, three, four, five, six, there's actually seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So I, I can't use this guide for me to figure out where the paper would go. Okay. Cause if I put it in like this, it's incorrect. Okay, because you want the ring spaced equally across the side. Okay, um, make sure before you do anything, you work out your measurements. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it off camera. And then I can come back and show you the punched version because I don't want to mess it up and just because I'm trying to do it for you. I want six rings only. And uh, maybe it's seven. Because this is kind of... I'm, I'm looking at it. Maybe I want seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. Hmm. Huh. The reason I had six is because of the colors. So maybe I have to use eight. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm looking at it like and eyeballing the measurement. I might have to do these one at a time. I don't think this will fit because of the thickness of these two together. I might have to punch them separately. But I have the guide here, so I can actually use that now. Okay, I'll come back and show you the punched version. And I'll even put the rings on here so that you can see it. Okay, be right back. Okay, so you can see I have punched a number of things. I punched the front cover um, with a thick tag stock. I punched the back cover. And I did them individually because they wouldn't fit in my punch. Um, so I had to make sure that they were lined up exactly the same way for each one. They're close and they're not perfect. And I also punched one of these and I showed this in my supplies, um, video, the second one of the two. And this is, um, acetate. So I'm peeling off the protective cover, the blue protective cover that it comes with. And it's still blue because there's another piece on the other side. So this is clear acetate. Um, that I purchased from Joann's a long time ago. Uh, I didn't, I didn't mention this when I was talking about the dimensions of my book. The reason why it is seven inches wide is because those recipe cards were six inches. Um, so I had to leave enough room for the rings to be punched and also, um, for tabs, cause I'm going to put tab dividers in my book and I don't like my tab dividers to hang over the edge of the cover. I like them to be inside the book because a lot of times when they hang over the edge, they get all dog-eared and stuff. So I want my tabs to be inside the cover of the book. So the cover is a little bit larger than the pages are going to be. See, now you can see it's clear. You can barely see it. You can see the glare from my lighting. Um, this is to protect the... Uh, paper cover of the book. So if, um, so I'm going to actually put this before I, um, uh, start attaching the rings. I, when you buy these rings from, for Happy Planner, that's what these are, that's what the brand these are. Um, you get 11 in a pack. And so you get repeated colors because I chose to do, um, eight rings, right? I think it might go the other way. It might line up better. The uh, 
Yeah, that lines up a little bit better. Um, because I chose to go with eight rings, I had to decide what colors in what order. So, again, if you have a piece of paper that has to be certain direction, make sure it's upright, you know, make sure it's the right direction and you can start um, putting your rings on. So I'm going to start with this color. I know it seems odd, but this is how you basically will put your rings together. So all you got to do is start attaching them. And then if, if for some reason you don't like it, you can just take them apart and rearrange it. I'm, I'm doing this um, Roy G. Biv style, sort of, but because I have two purples, one's a lighter and one's a darker, I split them up because I don't want them to be next to each other. And then I have a double of the pink um, ring because I started repeating colors. So, um, you know, you guys can decide if you have, it's perfect if you have just one color ring because then you don't have to decide the order. But I have to have this be all like rainbowy. I almost said another word, but rainbowy looking because I want mine to be a very happy looking recipe book. So this is, I'm just guiding the ring into the that gutter. So you can see right here. And I'm using the large rings because at this point I feel like I want to be able to add as much as I want in here. So here's the plastic cover to cover the front of the book. And then my my um, stamp is gonna go in here too. I haven't done that. Um, and then here's the back. And all you gotta do is, it's easier probably to do it this way, um, to snap them on. I'm gonna, again, remove the blue acrylic protective protector, plastic protector thing. And you can, you know, you can decide if you're going to round your corners, but rounding a corner with the pages covered like this is going to expose the corner of your um, chipboard. So not a good idea. That just makes more work for you in the end in constructing your cover. So that's why I didn't do it because I didn't want to spend, you know, days on my cover. I mean, you can. It's up to you. After all, the cover is the full-on impact, right, of your book. Everybody's going to see the cover, even if they never look at it. So let me make sure this lines up correctly before I snap that in place. And it looks fantastic, actually. So let me see how easy this is going to be for me. I might have to do it one by one, but I'm hoping to not do that. You can hear the um, plastic. It's not um, tearing it up at all. It's just really um, forcing it through that little divot that it makes in place. And then I'll never have to, you know, I won't have to take this off unless I decide I don't like something. And the reason I'm doing my cover first is because that, of course, will determine the size of the pages and all this kind of stuff. So I, I couldn't leave it till the last. Well, at least not in my head. So here we go. I know it doesn't look like much because there are no pages in my book yet. And as this starts to fill up, it will do that, right? So I've got my hand in there. Um, these are one and three quarter diameter inch rings. One and three quarter inch diameter rings. So I have, you know, quite some space to put in pages. And some of the pages can even be a little bit dimensional so what is that um let me get my ruler i'm trying to space it out like this is not proper to do it this way because the, i i don't want my book to do this i don't want it to do that i want it to to, to lie flat so i'm going to be very careful about that um if i'm if i'm doing this correctly which i'm probably not because you know you never know what it's going to end up being but that's um one inch there, but I'm pretty sure that if I stretch this out properly, it might give me a little more room. So it might be more of an inch and a quarter maybe, or inch and a half. So that is the assembly of my cover and the rings. Look how cheery it is. So again, I'm going to be using the papers that I've shown. Here's the inside. Um, and see, it, it's not going to come out. I'm, I'm tugging on it. It's not going to come out. 
And I'm actually going to um, be making dividers for mine with tabs along the side. Or I could do tabs across the top, but I think I'm going to do it along the side for the different types of recipes. You know, most recipe books have a, a divider or dividers. And so I'm going to use that. And then I'm going to have some with pockets, some pages with pockets, some pages without. Just depends. So you will see those as I make them and share them. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it was so long, but you know, I wanted to share with you how I'm constructing my book. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.